Hey everyone, welcome back to Geet Builds. I am Geet, creator and founder of both Minecraft and Garage Sales. So in today's super long video, I'll be making a map using World Painter first for the terrain and then building another big old castle. So if you aren't really interested in World Painter, feel free to skip ahead to 220 and that's when the building time lapse begins. So this week's winner of the subscriber giveaway was Graham, who does have a last name, but I'm not trying to dox them, so we'll just leave it at Graham. They wanted a castle that's in a valley surrounded by mountains, with the main portion of the castle on a hill, and then there's a smaller tower connected by a bridge off to the right. And then in addition to that, there would be a natural opening in the mountains with a path that is surrounded by statues of soldiers. So I jumped into World Painter and started making the terrain. And if you want to be entered in to win a map and have not entered already, just comment down below that you want to join in a way that I can get in touch with you, like Instagram or Planet Minecraft or Discord. And every week, I randomly choose one of my subscribers and make them a custom 1k1k map of their choosing, which I usually post a video about on Friday, but because this week's build ended up being a bit larger than usual, it's coming out a lot later. And since last week's video is late, uh, this week's video will also probably be a bit late, but I'm shooting for a Sunday upload, so look out for that. So the world painter part of this map was pretty basic. I made the overall slope and outline of the map first using the circle brushes, and I wanted to gradually slope downwards from the castle to the shore, so I made that gradient first and then made the mountains and hill and dug in the river after that. And I've been really liking adding some rocky outcrops and rivers lately, so I added that too. I think it makes the rivers look a lot more realistic and treacherous, as if the river has some rapids or something in it. And for the mountains, I wanted a texture that wouldn't be quite vanilla, but I didn't want the mountains to be dark like last week's video. So I ended up using a layered mix of stone, diorite, andesite, and cobblestone to give it a sediment look. And then for the trees, I went with a mix of oak and spruce trees, with boulders, logs, stumps, and bushes thrown in to give the ground some cool texture. And I was thinking about adding snow to the peaks of the mountains, but I didn't really think it would fit the theme I was going for or add anything to the map, so I ended up not doing that. And that's basically it for the world painting on this map. It wasn't too complex or anything, so the terrain part of the build didn't take a whole long to make, especially compared with the 30 hours spent building the castle and everything else, which I definitely can't do every week. So if you skip the world painting, welcome back to the video. So for the castle, I usually have a couple pictures or designs in mind when I'm making the outline and planning the build, but for some reason this week I either forgot to look for inspiration or just didn't really feel like it. So I winged it and started tracing the outline with orange wool wherever I thought it would look good. I threw around towers and parts of the castle stretching out from the main portion here and there, but yeah, I would definitely recommend using inspiration. I don't really know what I was thinking or why I just started placing blocks without a plan, and I've been getting a lot of people asking, especially on Reddit, about why I use orange wool first and then replace it with the actual material, and there's a couple reasons. Uh, but first, it allows me to use a pattern of different blocks and replace the orange wool with those blocks so that even if there are flat walls, they still have texture. Like in this build, I replaced the orange wool with stone, andesite, dead brain coral blocks, and cobblestone, and I think that's it. And that way I can place those blocks randomly super quick and not have to cycle through all of them while building. And since orange wool really stands out from everything else, it also makes it easy for me to see if I like the outline or if it needs to be adjusted before I start actually placing the blocks that will be used in the castle. So in my head, I imagine this castle having a lot of spires and towers sticking up, and that there would be one big hall that would be used as a throne room, which is part of what Graham wanted in the castle. So originally, I was going with one really big ceiling meeting in the middle, but that seemed really tall and unproportional, so I went with three different ceiling lines, with the one in the middle being taller than the outside ones, and having a balcony area on top instead of meeting in one point. And I thought it would look cool if the top balcony had some kind of additional decoration, so I made little arches that go all the way down and then added a wood beam covering on top of that, which is ripped right out of Skyrim and the White Run Castle, but I think it's dope so it's in my castle now too. And for the pointy spires, I tried a bunch of different designs and a lot of different colors uh, before settling with the style I have here. And originally I thought a bright red might be good and stand out against the other brown roofs and the grey of the castle, but it looked downright awful so I got rid of that immediately. And then I struggled to get the slope of these right and had to redo that 4 or 5 times, but in the end, I think they came out quite nice. Blackstone also helps to conceal any weird looking edges or imperfect slopes. I also tried to make all the spires have the same shape, even if they were bigger or smaller than the rest, to give the castle a bit of unity, and I'm really happy with the way they all look identical even though they're different sizes. And copy pasting the spires that are the same size in a couple different places ended up saving a lot of time, and not making each individual tower spire from scratch, so I definitely recommend learning to use WorldEdit 
if you don't already, and if you want to make big projects like this, it cuts down on all the boring repetitive work of placing every block in a wall over and over again, and I really don't think I'd be able to finish this project if I didn't know how to use world edit. And I turned the big circle tower at the end of the throne room into a dome with a peak at the top of it, just so that not all the towers looked the same. And I added a tiny covered bridge between the balcony and one of the tiny towers that was close to it, mostly because tiny bridges and castles look cool, and if I had planned the castle better I could have added more things, but it just didn't line up right. So with all the roof and tower spires done, I started adding decorations to the castle. And even though the red roofs looked bad, I thought red stained glass would look good. So I used that for all the windows, and I went with big, tall, stained glass windows all around the castle for decoration. And looking back, I probably didn't need to use as many as I did, and could have left some more bare segments and saved a little bit of time, but done is done, and there's about a thousand windows. I also ended up copy and pasting windows around the castle to save time and make sure that each part of the castle was made with the same style as the other parts of the castle, so two birds, one stone. And I forgot to talk about the roof color while I was making it, but that's a pattern of dark oak planks, spruce wood, dark oak wood, and brown terracotta, which I think as a color scheme looks really good. And if you made it this far and haven't liked the video already, make sure to do so. It's super helpful and tells YouTube that this video doesn't suck and that other people might enjoy it too. So throw it a like and help us bring more Geetles into the community. And if you're subscribed and want to be even more involved, you can join the Geetles Discord. The link for that is down in the description, so come on over. I try to post sneak peeks and screenshots of upcoming builds, and I like to get advice and ideas from all of you there too. And if you like this map and want to explore around it yourself, the link to Planet Minecraft to download it is also down in the description. My Instagram is down there as well. I try to put cool screenshots and renders of my builds on there too. So the castle is definitely gothic, especially with the stained glass windows and the pointy spires, and also the pointy crenellations going along the roof. And gothic is definitely becoming my favorite building style. Between last week's city and castle, and the castle in the middle of a frozen lake I did a couple weeks ago, I think I'm starting to get pretty well practiced in it. And it's a good mix of detailing and graceful looking lines, but not being so over detailed that you can't even tell what you're looking at, which is a huge pet peeve that I have when I'm looking at a lot of other large Minecraft castles. Cause like if you made a huge structure with a thousand details, but then you can't really even tell what you're looking at, what's really the point of all those details? I don't know, just a bit peeve, and I'm sure that also I over detail a bit in some of my builds. And it has to be a careful balance between not having too many details, but also having enough details to look good in game. Cause there's a bunch of castles out there that also look really good when you zoom really far out and make a render from a thousand blocks away. But then if you actually explore around in game, it just looks bland and awful. So this is just my two cents on the Minecraft castle genre. There's a ton of really good ones out there. But yeah, I think there are some out there that get a lot of clout when they don't really look all that great. And for the past minute or so, I've been finishing up the back half of the castle, with stained glass windows to match the front, and another big door and archway that matches the one on the front of the build as well. And just for the sake of time, I copy and pasted part of what I just built, and moved it around to the side, because at this point it had been over 20 hours of building in less than 48 hours, and I was getting exhausted. So onto the bridge. This is the one part of the build that I actually did use inspiration on, and it was a real bridge that I saw on Pinterest and thought looked really cool, and matched the vibe of the rest of what I had already built, with really big pillars and supports, a lot of layering and depth, and these cool arch sections along the bridge that are really heavy looking, and then have little statue type pillars along the side. I'm really happy with how it came out, and I think the heaviness matches how big the rest of the castle is, and how big the tower to the side is too, and I knew it would look funny if it was too small. And I'll admit, by the time I got to the tower, my brain was fried. I was desperate to finish the map, and I definitely rushed through it, so it's not the best thing I've ever built. And it could be a lot better if I'd had more time or a fresh knife sleep to go on, but I may do, and it's okay enough. And then of course, a castle needs some castle walls, so I built a gate using the door I'd already made around the back of the build, then made the tower on the right, which is used the spire from a tower on top of the castle, and put together another small tower on the left of the gate that's flat at the top. Then using my last functioning brain cell, I threw together some walls around the front, which aren't too complex but have a good shape and don't distract too much from the rest of the castle, and then I moved on to the back of the castle where I made walls around there as well, using the flat tower from around the front that I'd already built. And to be time efficient, I also copy and pasted the crenellations on top of the castle wall from the front of the build to the back, instead of placing all of those blocks by hand. And to finish it up, I built up from the terrain so that the walls blend in a bit better with the cliffside. And with all of the castle walls finally done, I started adding some details to the landscape, I used the large fountains from last week's video and remade them to fit at the front gate, and then added leaves to look like hedges around all the paths, and used roses, cobblestone walls, and dark oak gates to look like fences on the inside of the hedges. Then I went around and planted some oak saplings around the grassy areas, and let those grow into trees to fill up some of the empty space, and did the same around the back area of the castle. 
and then planted even more trees around the outside of the castle so that it fits snugly into the landscape and to keep it from looking like it weirdly sticks out from the rest of the map. And that's actually my one big complaint about the icy castle from a few videos ago. I think that the castle looks really good, but that I didn't do enough to actually make it blend into the map. So I wanted to focus more on this build to make it all look like it flows together, and I think it works really well here. I like that you can't see as much of the bottom of the castle walls, and the tree line goes all the way from the forest right up to the build. And then using the curvy ramp from last week's city as inspiration, I started building a winding road down from the gate to the grass below, marking roughly where I wanted to go using purple wool first, and then filling it with orange wool where I wanted the path to be, and then making a lot of adjustments to get the slope and thickness just the way I wanted it. And I think little things like this make the map feel more organic, especially since a lot of the castle is built on flat angles, except for some of the outer walls which are built on 45 degree angle, so this helped give the castle a bit more curviness. And now I'm building on the interior of the castle, which I don't usually do because it takes a lot of time and I don't really have a ton of practice with it. So in here I used the really tall ceilings to make large pillars that get thinner towards the middle and grow outwards until they meet with the other pillars across from them and then attach them to the sides of the room using lower arches to add a little depth and to keep everything from seeming too repetitive. Then I made the chandeliers using fences and chains, and moved on to the floor design. And as a whole, I tried my best to copy the throne room from Game of Thrones, and it definitely shows in the throne itself, which is really dark and sort of lumpy and made with different black stone blocks. And to fill in some of the remaining area on the sides of the room, I built a gallery out of dark oak wood, with the floor made out of spruce planks and with fences and gates around the side to be railings. As a little last finishing touch, I added some fences around the rest of the throne room just to break it up a little bit into smaller segments, and added some lanterns all around to light it up a bit, since the chandeliers weren't quite doing the job on their own. And with that, the castle was done! The only thing left to do was make the statues along the path. So since I don't really have any talent or experience with building statues like this, and because I literally had no time left, I found a dwarf statue schematic that I really liked by Trixie Blocks from a couple years ago, made a couple of adjustments to the color of the statue, and added it around the path along with a base to put it on. So that's all the building completed! The rest of the video will be a nice, relaxing, cinematic fly around the map, and a lot of good angles to show what the castle looks like up close and from far away. So make sure to stick around for the rest of the video, and if you've enjoyed the video so far, go ahead and throw it a like! And remember, every like is one small step for man, one giant leap for Geek's channel. And if this video gets 30 likes, I'll go ahead and actually post this week's subscriber giveaway map by Sunday, I pinky promise. So I hope this video brought you some joy, and I'll see you next time. Peace.